Hey, it's Jimmy P. Brown the second coming at you uh, with another How Do You Play That Riff. Stay tuned. All right, well, welcome all YouTubers, Facebookers, and all other onlookers. Jimmy P. Brown the second here coming at you with uh, my second segment of uh, how do you play that riff? So uh, hopefully you guys are getting some stuff out of this. And uh, I know I'm having a lot of fun doing this guy. I rarely play guitar on uh, my videos, so it's, uh, it's actually a lot of fun. And busting out the SG is always cool. I love playing this thing. So, uh, but we'll, we'll go through some of, uh, some other cool stuff too, and other guitars and all sorts of goodies, uh, over the next, uh, several episodes. So, okay. So today, before we, well, we're going to get into the song Always Falling, uh, which is on iTunes and Spotify and anything out there with my solo stuff. Um, so I've gotten a lot of requests for this, but before we get into it, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Also the like button, if you like what you see here and the little ringy ding. So that way you're notified of my next video when it comes out. Okay. Enough of that. Let's get into the jams. Okay. So, uh, I'm, I'm back on, uh, the detuning. So, um, obviously a lot of people know I do. I just love D. Fun, fun key. The funny thing is, like I said in my last video uh, for uh, the song Ego, uh, guitar players primarily always, you know, complain, you know, that, you know, gosh, you always mix the bass so heavy and it hides the guitar riffs. So, well, I just like things bass heavy. So it's just kind of the way I mix things. But nonetheless, uh, that's why I'm doing this. And today, we're going to tackle the song Always Falling. Now, Always Falling is a, a funny song. For me, I, I, it's a beautiful song. I love it. Uh, and not to pat myself on the back, but uh, uh, the funny thing about the song is like when I first sent it to Manny to go ahead and write his bass riffs for it, uh, he calls me like within an hour or so and he's like, is, is there like only three chords, the whole song? And I'm like, yeah, the whole song is just three chords over and over and over. In fact, there is an acoustic track of the guitar just doing the same, you know, B flat, D minor, and C over and over and over. Yeah, over and over and over, it's hilarious. And, uh, you know, then I've got a rhythmic keyboard track going, and uh, and then I've, I've got, you know, a bunch of other stuff happening, obviously. And then uh, Manny just ripped it up with uh, coming up with a great bass line that carries the, the song very beautifully, uh, in my opinion. And um, and uh, just but but no one can believe it's just three chords, the whole song. So um, so here is the, the main part of the riff, the, the guitar. Um, when, when the, the distorted guitar comes in, it's real simple. It's just doing those three chords. That's it. So every time the distorted guitar comes in, that's what it's playing. And then there's that keyboard part and it's like, oh, well, that's not really a keyboard and we'll get into that in just a minute. But so let's go through this uh, bar. We're gonna bar from the D string down to the, um, the B string. So D, D, G, B, okay, on fret three. Um, so, and then we're gonna come in with our pinky on the sixth fret, okay, uh, on the B string. And so we're gonna. That's all that is. And then we slide into a D minor pattern. A little rhythmic picking there. So. Then C. And do a little, like, you know, rhythmic thing with the. And 
Okay. So, slow down. I, I promise you that's all she wrote. <laughs> so uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll play that through quick uh, at uh, the, the, the song speed. That's it. So, um, one more time, slow down. Now we're to keep that rhythm going, so. is it so again now the keyboard part everybody always says you it's funny I, I've gotten quite a few emails actually that say you're really fond of that one keyboard patch and you use it on a lot of your songs it's not a keyboard it's an ebo so um the way I like to use the ebo is I actually I, I come in on my neck pickup okay and it, it's a magnetic pick and it, and it just vibrates the strings and what I do is I just play with a clean tone. A little gain on there. And I back the tone knob off just a hair. Uh, may, may, well, maybe, maybe down like two or three notches, you know. And flip it on. Gives you that nice little glowing blue. And then you're going to hold it to the, uh, the neck pickup. Now you're like, oh my gosh, yeah, that's the keyboard part that we're always hearing. So, yeah, it does that. it and remember don't you don't have to be all gainy because the, the magnetic pull on the string and, and the way it vibrates it gives you all that gain and uh, I've had this thing since 1990 um, when uh, I was walking around the NAM show and uh, with George and uh, we were there, uh, I, I got stuck at the Ebo booth because some guy was playing the Bowie Heroes riff. And I was like, oh, that's how Robert Fripp did it. He was playing using an Ebo. Now he uses uh, the Sustaniac pickup to, to do it because it's just a pickup that's basically an Ebo. Um, and to get all that lovely sustain. So, um, but um, back then it was, it was the Ebo. And... Um, these are just so fun, and, and uh, I didn't have any money on me, and I said, hey, George, give me 100 bucks so I can buy this. And it was, I think it was like 90 bucks or something like that. So, But super, super cool. Uh, I also use uh, the Eon from TC Electronic. Uh, that's, that's a nice Ebo, too. A little more temperamental than this. This is like, you know, you just get on the note. So... Um, and then also it has this other switch that's kind of a polarity switch and it gives you octaves. That's really, really cool. So, um, and the Eon doesn't do that, 
but this the old traditional Ebo does. But the Eon's really cool, uh, like on my tally. It's really, really great with the lipstick uh, pickup. Um, and uh, but like I said, it's a, it's a little more fighty. So, but. anywho, that's what's going on. So over. So when you got that, da, 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 so that. You you know so the secrets of jimmy brown super duper simple stuff <laughs> just remember always practice uh, you know what you're doing with your rhythm you know and the rhythm's all in your hands the whole feel the tone everything that you do it's all in your hands and uh, so just practice along again i'm going to leave a link here for you to uh follow along and play and listen to the song uh or you can download the whole album uh to listen to it's on available for streaming or purchase on itunes spotify pandora um, etc everywhere so i uh, hope you enjoyed this uh segment of uh how do you play that riff and we will see you next time. If you enjoyed this, uh, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button, the like button, and the little ringy ding to let you know of my next video when it comes out. Because I'm going to be doing some gear reviews soon. And um, also come by my website, www.jpbii.com. Stands for Jimmy P. Brown II. And of course, if you want to see me keep making music, videos, and all sorts of good stuff, and you want to support the cause, uh, go by my Patreon and visit me there, patreon.com forward slash jpbii. Guitar players keep playing. So funny, this is very uncomfortable for me. I do not wear my guitar this high. Those of you that know me when I'm on stage, I, I wear it practically down to my knee. Um, so it's kind of weird playing it like this, but it's it's fun. Nonetheless, hopefully uh, it's showing you guys what you need to, to do to, to learn these songs. So, All right, take care and we'll see you next episode.